<laughs> well, yeah, I'm Josh Sharp. Uh, it's nice to meet you. I'm from the Diz Insider. Um, yep. Yeah, and if, before we begin, if you want to introduce yourself so anybody who's watching can know kind of who you are. Sure. Uh, I'm Matt Hamilton. I'm an actor. I live in Vancouver. I play Trent Havelock in the new Disney Plus series, uh, Turner and Hooch, starting July 21st. Awesome. Um, before getting into Turner and Hooch, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about your career in general. I know sure. that before you started acting, you were uh, primarily did screenwriting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you want, yeah. Uh, what drew you to writing for television and film initially? Yeah, good question. Um, well, when I was a kid, like I was, I was, a, I was a movie nerd. Like I, I bought all the VHSs. I did, <laughs> I did that whole thing. And I, I would write these short stories when in my head were short movies. And actually one time, I remember, I even tried to write a, I finished watching like a child's play, uh, a Chucky movie. And so mm -hmm. I tried to write a child's play book, I guess. But I, in my head, I was doing like a movie. Um, and then I didn't think anything of it until I went to um, uh, university. And I took a writing course in one of the, one of the curriculums, or one of the things was screenwriting. Mm -hmm. And then I just went, oh, oh, this works. <laughs> and so I left university, I went to Vancouver Film School, uh, graduated, my first script won this contest, I got this agent in New York, I thought I was going to be this rich writer, and so I kind of just, I tried to skate on that script, I made a little bit of money on it, but not nothing really, and uh, I tried to skate on that for a while, and then I was just kind of having fun bartending, and my mom was like, you should go back and finish your degree, so <laughs> finally <laughs> I... Yeah, so I was like, yeah, fine. I'm like, I don't know why. What's the point? And I went back and finished my writing degree and it was like one of the best things I ever did because I, I end up uh, with people I still write with today in, mm -hmm. in my classes and you just start writing more and reading more. And so I started kind of doing more stuff and um, I, you know, I got some things optioned. I had some stuff placed in um, um, like contests and festivals and, and things like that, which kind of opened doors for me and mm -hmm. I've done like a, I haven't had a lot of stuff made. I've had you know some stuff. I got a feature that hopefully is going to shoot in December. Oh, that's awesome. It's me knocking on wood. Um, <laughs> right. But um, but we'll see. I mean, I I've, I've learned to like not count your chickens or get your hopes up or whatever. Because a couple of times I'm like, oh, they option my script. We're going to make a movie, and they say all the right things. And like to the credit, they probably do want to make it, mm -hmm. but finances and this and that and schedules and all this stuff kind of come into play and sometimes it just doesn't happen so yeah in a roundabout way I mean that's kind of how I got into acting because I would write these shorts and sketches and acted them mm -hmm. and then uh and then a friend of mine she's an actor who I've known for a long time uh Leah Gibson she was like hey you gotta go to Vancouver I was in Victoria at the time she's like you gotta go mm -hmm. to Vancouver get an agent da -da 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 -da. she sent me this big message which she forgets about i'm like cool that like could have changed my <laughs> life and you don't even remember it yeah that's funny um, um but yeah so then so i'm like okay so i did got an agent and then yeah that was about 10 10 years ago 11 years ago no so you've been acting for about 10 years then yeah yeah but that's 10 cool. between 10 and 12 years cool that's funny that was actually my next question is your transition from screenwriting to acting yeah. um because have you felt that your writing helps has helped in your acting like now that you you know the writing side of things does that help as you prepare to you know fulfill a character yeah yeah I, I do think it helps that because um it I, fi I find it easy or easier like or just naturally to break down scenes and break down character motivations and subtext and, and just things like that just because that that's in my toolbox and listen mm -hmm. that's not just a thing that writers like a lot of actors do that yeah but for me for me it comes it becomes comes really naturally and, and I like to improv a lot mm -hmm. and, but it's not just, I mean, if I can, like it's, if the director says like I'm Legion, no, I was like, nah, I'm like, okay, fair. You have one Emmys. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Thing. Um, but uh, with my improv, it's not just like, let's, I want to see, try and say something funny and, mm -hmm. and see, you know, I want to make Josh Peck laugh here. Right. It, it, it's usually motivated by character. Yeah. And it's like a different way for exposition to come out or like, or, or something like that. So I, I, I think it, uh, my kind of screenwriting background really helps that aspect of it too. Yeah. And I'd imagine the more familiar, familiar you are with the script, 
the be- the more authentic that improv will be yeah uh, for your character yeah, because exactly. if you yeah. if you know the script inside and out you know not just your character but yeah. everything you, that will really help in that yeah. sense yeah well i mean i'm doing this movie now i just finished it and i i finished one three weeks ago and then they asked me to do this one in Kelowna and I had a two day break in between movies starting. Wow. So I was like, uh, yeah. Cause you know, I like to golf. I got friends up here and <laughs> it's on a lake and I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And it's like, it's a role I've done a lot and it, with the director I've worked with a lot. So he kind of lets me uh, kind of play, but I just, you know, I kind of skim. I read my stuff. I kind of skimmed the rest of the script and the, the other <laughs> day we're doing a scene. I'm like, Hey, why do I call you a poet? Is that like a dig? He's like, I am a poet. <laughs> I'm like that's hilarious oh, okay well that's that shows. Sense. It, yeah, <laughs> i guess it helps to read the whole script that's great uh, that's but great. hey producers don't i'm super professional don't that right don't take that into your decision making yeah that right um so getting into turner and hooch were you mm-hmm. uh how did your involvement with this series come about was there an audition process kind of how did you land no. the role actually funny enough i was here in Kelowna shooting a movie oh really and- yeah and i got i got the uh i got the audition and i was like oh this this is right up my alley and the girl who i was taping with is actually here too oh, cool. um yeah she yes yeah, they asked us to do the same movie anyways whatever we're friends <laughs> we're she out. read it, it was, she taped she read for me and i taped my audition she's like yeah yeah that's you yeah you got that that is i got no 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 it's and then I was kind of, I went back to Vancouver and I was kind of waiting and a friend of mine who works at the casting that was doing the, um, that was doing Turner and Hooch. He said, yeah, they're doing Turner callbacks today. So I'm kind of busy or whatever. I'm like, wait, I didn't get a callback. I swear <laughs> I killed that. He's like, let me check. And then he's like, oh, they haven't done your character yet. And so then I, I got a callback and it was kind of strange. It was over Zoom. So I'm sitting there with my right. phone and there was like, Mike Horowitz, Matt Nix, uh, Rob McGill, who directed it, some corporate people, whatever, casting people, the reader. Um, but so you, you set up the thing in front of you and then, you know, your eye lines are this and this. But when somebody laughs, if, they, if they're not muted, the screen keeps changing because right. they come up on the screen. Right. Because they said something. So it was kind of distracting. So it's a little bit different than being in a room, but uh, I got through it. I guess I guess I did, it worked because... I did it. Right. That's awesome. Did you, so was the Zoom thing, was that in the middle of COVID when you did that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it was it. October, beginning of October. Oh, wow. September, so, end of September. Yeah. So in, the, so, in the thick of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so we did a table read. I'm not, I'm not in the pilot. I come in at episode two. Okay. Um, and so we did a table read of episode two and three with the cast and everyone was kind of had their own kind of table and shit like that. And oh, so that you did the a live table read, not a live even. table read. Got yeah. it. Got it. And they recorded it for the um, for the people in LA. Um, okay. And so that so that was fun. So you could kind of get the sense of everybody a little bit. I mean, there's some people that I just never work with on the show, just because mm-hmm. our story, like uh, Lindsay Fonseca, Vanessa, and she's like I, we just don't intersect. So we like we met there and then it was like, we'd see each other and crossover. I'm leaving. Right. They're coming in. Right. Kind of thing. But, uh, yeah. It was right in the thick of it where, you know, getting tested three times a week. Yeah. Uh, uh, masks, protocols, a lot of hand sanitizer. Sure. All that stuff. Yeah. So if that was in September, October, when was filming? We started, they shot the pilot uh, beginning of October, I think. Oh, so right around the same time. Got it. Yeah. Makes and sense. I started end of October okay yeah and so i kind of went like i had breaks because i'm in half the episode so mm-hmm. you know i i had like a six-week break over christmas because i had two episodes off and the christmas break which was kind of nice i got to go just kind of chill and um yeah we wrapped up in april yeah awesome april. so pretty pretty recently then yeah yeah, yeah. that's kind of how television works doesn't it <laughs> yeah yeah it really is like you finish and then it's like oh it's done it's cool. Yeah. Um, how, were you familiar with the original, by the way, the original Turner and yeah. Hooch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, lo- I loved that movie as a kid. It was like, cause I mean, Tom, uh, by the way, it's like a, that and A League of Their Own are like the peak Tom Hanks yelling, screaming. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I, I guess I kind of blocked it out because I rewatched it to watch to do the show. Mm-hmm. Hooch, fuck. Oh, sorry, I can't swear. Can I? No, swear? you're good. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Hooch fucking dies. Right. I know. <laughs> and I, I think I blocked that part out. Like he gets shot and he's on the thing, and I'm like, okay, well, this is sad, but he'll get up, right? And then Tom Hanks is like doing the the like the, 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 the dead face, and it's like then the eyes close and the vet shakes her head and I was and, like and you're like they can't go back from this. They, just killed, they just killed hooch i couldn't believe it i, I well, totally forgot about that part well it's so funny because as i was kind of looking into you know doing some research and trying to figure out kind of some questions to ask i came across there was a pilot for an unused turner and hooch reboot show that the wonderful world of disney was going to do and funny enough they resurrected hooch he didn't actually die they resurrected oh. him and they were gonna, they were going to do a whole show and then it and the guy that played Tom Hanks's character was I forget his name but Biff Tannen from Back to the Future. Oh my god. And really? they yeah and so it's like on YouTube it's like terrible VHS quality because yeah. it never got like it never got a it never got sent through. It was yeah. they filmed a pilot and then Disney was like no we don't want to do it. <laughs> so yeah. So that was the failed Turner and Hooch reboot and now we have the real Turner and Hooch sequel reboot where that's funny. the original hooch is actually dead <laughs> yeah god that's that funny, funny. Like, the execs are like nah he's uh, he made it you're like what did you watch <laughs> yeah. the movie they like Definitely yeah they didn't. changed the ending yeah I, yeah I thought that was kind of hilarious um so had you ever acted alongside well you've obviously acted with humans but have you ever acted yeah. with a dog before on set? uh kind, kind of but not not to this extent mm -hmm. like this was you know you learn early on that oh you only got two pages to shoot today maybe don't make plans for lunch like it could be it could be a long day which is you know which was fine because it was the show was so fun to do mm -hmm. so i honestly didn't care if i was there 10 hours or 12 hours because everyone involved was like really fun and there was it was always a positive vibe on set but there's that you know thing like i said early on it's like okay we just gotta do a little dog stunt and then they still have to do two pages so i'll be gone and it's hour 10 and i'm still there it's like go ahead <laughs> dogs sometimes don't listen to to where their marks are yeah especially with those dogs because i mean the whole joke of the thing is they're not you know they're, they're not the smartest they're not you know there's a reason right. why you know police forces german shepherds and stuff like that right but these are big dopey sweet dogs which makes it funny and they slobber a shit ton but <laughs> it's uh but yeah, it, but so yeah, so it's yeah, it was it was long, it was long. Yeah, a lot of and a lot of this thing where it's like they need the dog to do something, and so the you, the camera's on you, and you got it's your coverage, but you got the trainers doing this in your eye line and squeaking <laughs> so you, toys and, and you <laughs> so you have to, get to just kind of like block that out. Yeah, sort of. yeah. Anthony Rubiar, who plays uh, the chief, he he told me early on, he's like, just make sure you are absolutely dialed because it is hard sometimes when you got the trainers doing all their things i'm like okay good good to know good to know but well you know once you get all that it's just, you just it just becomes part of your work day that's just how yeah. it is yeah you kind of get into that rhythm of you just have to focus on your thing and let the dog do what it does yeah, yeah. and plus i got overtime on my deal so it was, everything how about out. that Great. right yeah that's awesome um what do you think about the series will appeal to audiences um and also, two-part question. Also, yeah. does it stand on its own, or do you have to be really familiar with the original in order to enjoy the new show? It, it stands on its own. They reference. They, they reference. Obviously, he plays yeah. uh, Tom Hanks's son. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's not requisite knowledge to watch a movie. I mean, I would. Yeah. Because it's canon. But sure. um, uh, what I think audiences will connect with the show is. To, like I've only seen I mean obviously I've been in it I've only seen mm -hmm. um the ADR stuff I haven't actually seen any episodes but oh wow like, it's fun it's a fun show and and they really leaned into the comedy like it's an action show it's a mm -hmm. one-hour action show but they really leaned into the comedy and really encouraged ideas and improvisation and things like that and so there, there aren't a lot of one-hour comedy first shows yeah that's and, true it's usually 22 minute, 22 yeah. minute ones yeah and so, and, and you know, some of the action is really cool. And, but I mean, it's just, it's fun. Like it's a fun show and it's, it, you know, comes at, I think at a perfect time and, you know, after the world ended for yeah. know, six, 14, 16 months or whatever it was, 
yeah, this this is like the perfect tonic to that. Like it's fun, it's funny. There's some cool stuff. It's got dogs. It's got Josh <laughs> Beck. It's got Matt Hamilton, which you know that might be not for everybody, but it's got a lot of great people in it. And so <laughs> the cast is great. The cast is great. It's just it's a, so much fun. I'm excited to to uh, get to get to watch it. I got the screeners last night, but I haven't. I got it late, so I haven't been able to watch the first three oh, episodes gotcha. yet. But okay, I have the first cool. three, so I'll, after this, I'll be. I'm gonna go watch them. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So I was curious. I have to ask your character, uh, Trent Havelock, doesn't yeah. like dogs. So are no. you a cat or a dog person? Dog. Dog. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I mean, listen. I've kind of come around. Like well, most of the time, I'm, I'm in my life, I'm like, fuck cats. Like, <laughs> like they a lot of break people. your shit. <laughs> they, you know, like they don't care about you. They use, you know. I have two cats, so I can attest to that. Yeah, but uh, my cousin's got a cat that is, it's one of those ones where you go, oh yeah, actually cats can be awesome. Yeah. It's like an absolute sweetheart. But yeah, dog, I had a dog, actually I had to put my dog down halfway through filming. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was 17. Wow. Yeah, it was just after the holiday break and it was, oh my God, it was, you know, obviously something I knew was, was coming. Mm -hmm. It just kind of happened pretty quickly it's like oh he's not eating any food and oh, sometimes shit. that happens so oh. fast and you're like no <laughs> you know yeah oh you, man this can't be yeah i went back two days after to work and that, i mean i think that was helpful because i had mm -hmm. you know dogs around and then your mind is focused on other things but god it's strange very strange yeah, but yeah dog i've had dogs pretty much my whole life that's awesome well for my last question, uh, obviously we've got Turner and Hooch, um, and I was going to ask. You said you just finished filming a new movie mm. yesterday. Uh, what else do you have working on? What, you got anything else in the works that we should be looking got, out for? Yeah, I got. Um, I've done a couple. I've done three in the last kind of couple months. Like one's a Christmas movie, and the kind of I did a drama with Tom Everett Scott mm. and Ella Ballantyne in um, in Victoria. I think that could be interesting. I'm not sure when that comes out, but Did I you got say that's a, a movie or a, a, a series. A movie, a movie. Okay, got it. Um, and then I have this heist script that I've written that option that might start prepping in November and shooting in December. I I hope. Um, that's what it sounds like right now. So that would be. I mean, that's the one I really want to do. The one I finished yesterday was like a romantic kind of bullshit comedy thing <laughs> you know one of those the hallmark yeah. style got it thing. so yeah i wouldn't be too worried about that one <laughs> I want to see it. okay well uh, yeah did you so is the heist sorry going back to what you were saying is that yeah. that's filming later this year is that the one that you wrote you said yeah. or is it yeah. okay cool and are you good would you yeah. star in that too or yeah yeah i have a role i mean i can't i, I don't think i can be the lead because my name doesn't really drum up a lot of international sales, <laughs> uh, which I get. Hey, man, that's part of the whole thing. So, uh, but yeah, there's a the cool kind of supporting role where I'm that's kind awesome. of in that job, which is fun. Well, cool. Yeah. I'm excited to look out for that, those projects. And yeah, thanks so much for talking to me. Uh, yeah, I man. appreciate it. It's been great. Um, well, well, good luck with your uh, all your projects. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. All right. Take it Bye. easy. See ya.